Hi, I'm Paul. I'm Tammy. And, and we're, we're inseparable. inseparable. And today, we I promised yesterday we would finish up the book by Ruby Simone, Asperger's. We're not actually finishing up the book. We're finishing up this one particular section of the difference between male and female Asperger's. And I want to say something about this book. This is the handbook for Aspie girls for figuring out that you have Asperger's. Mm -hmm. If you're a female, and uh, I was listening to Dr. Tony Atwood the other day, and he was saying that a woman that was diagnosed at 43 years old, which is the age you are, yeah. um, got the book, and after reading it, she said, I'm going to give this to my mother so she that might be able to better understand you know, all my childhood and everything that went on. And the mother read it, and after the mother read it, she said, well, I'm the source. And she was 83, I think they said. Yeah, she was 83, <laughs> and she figured out, I'm the source. And, and this is coming. This is, this is no one's admitting it to, to it yet, but they are finding out that autism and Asperger's is not suddenly appearing. It is genetically passed down. It isn't due to any other thing uh, other than genes. Uh, you may be more likely to get diagnosed in certain situations because they're looking for it. If your parents are older, things like that, if you're a male, but they're going to find out. And I think they already know they're not admitting it, that it's purely genetic. Well, that's why they're doing, finding a, finding a genetic test for it and, you know, doing research on genes and all of that. Okay. So you want to go ahead and start? And... So... We have three more in this book, and the first one is less likely to stutter than male counterparts when stressed or upset, although both may have a raspy, choked, or monotone voice or suffer mutism at those times. Yeah, I occasionally see you get choked a little bit, but for the most part, just mute if you're really stressed. You don't stutter. No, I Not don't stutter, no. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be it. You don't get a raspy, you know, sexy raspy. Well, I, th I think I have a hard time talking because of the, it says when you're stressed or ups upset, you know, and that's why I have a hard time talking or have like maybe feel choked or even mutism, like you can't talk. Right. I don't think people with autism, a lot of people with autism have it even worse. Like I think females tend to have the mutism um, when you're upset and, or having a meltdown, you can't speak. And one of the YouTubers we watch was actually suggesting to text if, or write down what you're feeling if you can put it into words and not vocalize it, just to let the other person know what what's going on. Well, especially somebody hasn't seen it before, and you go into a meltdown. And what's wrong? What's wrong? And not only are you having a meltdown, this is making it worse because you can't speak, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, um, so we've been in that situation once before where I, I knew what to do, just leave you alone, maybe go in the bathroom and somebody, go comfort her, go, no, 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 you're, okay, go, go ahead, you know, and they're like, what's wrong with you, you know, I know what to do, that's what's wrong with me, mm -hmm. you, you know, okay, go ahead. Uh, females are generally better at socializing in small doses, may even give the appearance of skilled, but it is a performance, like her male counterpart will shut down in social situations once overloaded. Yeah, that's definitely true for me. Um, I tend to do better socializing with just a few people than larger crowds, and um, but yeah, I do, I do... Um, tend to to get a little bit you know overwhelmed or overloaded with too much socialization i have to limit it and mm -hmm. tend to when i get home be kind of drained from socializing right you, you don't you prefer and you just mentioned texting before you prefer texting to speaking on the phone yeah. and um you know especially for long durations of time mm -hmm. it's, it's really tough on you um, you do do well in social situations, um, and you're not as awkward as you feel you are, or you don't appear to be. That doesn't mean you're not, you know, and that I, internally. Yeah, I think I feel awkward, but 
you've told me that I don't appear awkward. So right. it's just, well. it's just myself the way I feel, but yeah, I don't like talking on the phone. I prefer texting. Um, and I think that a lot of people with autism do, I think it's funny that the things that you learn where you don't realize why you're the way you are. And then you, you see other people talking about it and they're all, and then one person actually joined, uh, a group and said, well, I think I'm on the spectrum and I want to make, I want to talk on the phone with somebody to compare. And everybody was like, no, I don't want to talk on the phone, but I'll, t I'll, you can message me and stuff. Cause it's like, that's one of the c kind of signs of autism is you don't like, I'll only talk on the phone when I really have to like calling the doctor's office or something. You, you probably are not. Yeah. <laughs> probably you... not autistic if you, the first thing you want to do is talk to somebody on the phone because oh, yeah, everybody yeah, else yeah, is like, yeah, yeah. has this really bad reaction to it. And, you know, my phone rings, I just have this high sense of anxiety. I, I don't like talking on the phone. You know? Yeah. I, I talked to somebody online the other day and, and I was asking a few questions and he kind of snapped back at me in the way an Asperger's would. And I said, okay, yeah, I think you, you should probably go for testing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the last one is uh, more likely to keep pets for emotional support, but not always due to sensory issues. Yes. Oh, big time. You, you would have the house full of pets if you could. <laughs> oh, if I could. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because I really love my cats. And since we've been married, we've always had cats. We had our first cat was a tuxedo cat we mm -hmm. had for a few years. And unfortunately, he got hit by a car. And then... We rescued a, a second cat um, that we had for, you know, about eight years or so. And unfortunately, she had cancer and had to be put to sleep. Um, she was mostly an indoor cat. And then the two cats we have now were rehomed and their sisters. Um, you know, I'm actually more of a dog person and we've always had cats. And I, I don't know if part of that is because where we worked, we... Uh, we're only allowed one pet and with the apartment and things. Um, this last uh, set of cats we got, we were able to get the two and with no problem, even though we were living where we worked. Um, but I think part of the reason maybe not having a dog is because they bark. And I think you know, that is a sensory issue for me when I, and we live in a great neighborhood. The neighbors are very respectful. Uh, once in a while you hear a dog bark here and there, but not like all day long or, you know, but the smaller dogs tend to have that kind of yappy bark where they tend to bark more because I think they need to protect themselves. And the large dogs have a louder bark, but, um, if like you, we were saying, if, if we get a dog, you would say, well, they'll be trained not to bark, you know, but right. trained to bark once, you know, yeah. not to bark on and on and on. Um, my friend had a dog and the father trained the dog how to bark, you know, bark to alert them and then stop. Yeah. They're alerted and, and not, you know, but actually I think the cats were kind of a matter of chance. We had a tenant that had cats and they were feeding other cats that were strays and then they left. So mm -hmm. we had to do something. And I said, all right, why don't you take in that stray cat and that'll be your pet for now. And then um, when that cat got hit by a car, everybody said, we got to get another cat. You got to get a new cat, you know? So mm -hmm. we didn't really think anything of it. We went out and adopted the cat and the one thing we wanted to make sure because that one was a stray so it always wanted to go out it was used to being in the outside world and the um we wanted one that would stay in they said oh no problem this one's gonna stay she's very skittish she isn't gonna mm -hmm. want to be begging you to go out and after she was about nine years old before she developed cancer but <clears throat> i think in between there between her and we did try to uh, adopt a golden retriever. Yeah. And, and you know, a guy was working, doing some maintenance work and said, oh, my, my brother had a, a golden retriever, but my mother's taking care of it because they had a baby and my mother doesn't like it. And I think it's unfair to the dog. And I said, we'll take it, <laughs> you know? And, and he said, yeah, really? And, and so I think, but then they came back. And so it's just a matter of- They didn't want to rehome it. They 
they wanted to keep it, but at a distance because the baby and the fur and the dog mm -hmm. fur and all that. But so they weren't really looking to rehome it. So we kind of got caught in the middle of that whole thing. And yeah, so we, so we did consider it. Yeah. I mean, it's, and and then uh, then these two cats, friends of ours, said they need to rehome them. I said, babe, what do you think? He said, yeah, you mm -hmm. know. So okay, so I think that covers the list of differences between male and female Asperger's that is listed in the book by Ruby Simone. I mm -hmm. finally got her name down. <laughs> uh, Asperger girls, if you want to figure out whether you have, Asp if you're an Asperger girl, Aspie girl or not, there's your book. That is, is the best. That was the one that kind of shorted it up for me when she mentioned the T TV commercials and the other and the neighbors mowing their lawns. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so take care. God bless. We love you. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.